if there's a phenomena of design inspiration that applies to products we use in our daily lives. Watches and watchmaking are the best examples where we see how inspirations are taken and ideas are reshaped to produce something interesting and everlasting. Like Odema Piguet Royal Oak, where the design inspiration was taken from diverse helmet with exposed screws. And then there's Patek Philippe Nautilus, where the design inspiration was taken from ship porthole. And then the idea was inspired by Royal Oak. We have Rolex Samarina, where the dial layout with circular hour markers was arguably inspired by Blancpain 50 Fathoms. And then we have Tudor Samarina, where the design inspiration was taken from its sibling Rolex Samarina. And now we have all new Tudor Royal, where again the hints of design inspirations are clear. The integrated bracelet design we have is arguably inspired by Rolex Oyster Quartz, AP Royal Oak and also Rolex Datejust. Interestingly, it also takes the design inspiration for bezel from Tudor Oyster Prince Daydate from 1960s. If you are thinking that the name Royal is inspired from Royal Oak too, it is actually a revival of Tudor Royal from 1950s, but of course this time in integrated bracelet and case design. Another interesting character about Tudor watches is that while you do get a Rolex vibe due to Tudor being a sister company, it's almost understood they are not there to compete with Rolex, rather offer a more affordable watch to the market, yet without taking away the core attributes of mechanical watch. And with Royal, Tudor have actually offered a watch with integrated bracelet design which is something that is simply not available with any Rolex model from its current line. And despite the added experience and joy on offer, the aspect of affordability is not compromised. In fact, the highest spec Tudor watches continue to max out in price before Rolex even start their most basic model in steel. This particular example we have in this video is 38mm reference from the Royal range in the blue dial and Roman numerals. In the 38mm size, there is no day available and the model we have is time and date only with three hand style. The date window is available at 3 o'clock position and while I personally prefer date at 3 o'clock as opposed to 4.30 or 6 o'clock position, in this particular example, the way the numeral 3 is cut out does look a little out of place and I think it would have been better if Tudor had left out half numeral for 3 altogether. Both the hour and minute hand come with two facets and this helps not just only with how they play with the light adding to the pleasure of wrist wear but they also enhance style readability and ease of time reading. These facets are similar to what we see on Rolex Datejust but the shape of hands with rounded corners is a unique touch and leaves these hands an identity of their own. Both hands are filled with lume and we will look at lume shot shortly. While there are many sizes and dial options to choose from, blue is interesting and versatile in a way that it leaves the watch with dressier characters while being subtle and then the vibe of luxury watch is still there. The shade of blue here is subtle yet bright enough to add hues where the wrist experience simply can't go unenjoyed. The dial comes with sunburst treatment and the radial lines are very well defined which we will experience up close later in the video. To picture the size of the watch, the size of face of watch measured at the outer extremity of the bezel is 37.96 mm, so it is a true 38 mm watch. Integrated bracelet watches are generally notorious for their wearability, but here lug to lug height is only 44.83 mm, and since the bracelet sticks straight down, there is no further flaring that the watch offers on the wrist. The horizontal span of the watch, with crown included, is 40.42 mm. The size of dial or crystal on top is 31.23 mm. The width of bracelet at the widest point where it connects to the case 
is 23.63 mm and it tapers down to 15.98 mm at the narrowest point. If you include the width of flip lock class 2, it is 17.98 mm. The watch comes with interesting angular case design with bold corners and angles. The case sides are polished and then the top surface of the case is fully brushed. There's no bevels or chamfers on the case and I do think that polished and tapered bevels might have added an interesting character to this case. The bezel has fluted lines and then there's intermittent polished boxes to add uniqueness and looks of their own. The bracelet is interesting design and comes with five links, having side and center links fully brushed and then intermediate links are polished. Again, there's no bevels or chamfers on side, but for its price, you really can't complain. To keep the cost low and offer this watch to larger market, there's no in-house movement. Rather, this particular reference comes with Salita based movement and offers only 38 hours of power reserve, meaning if you don't wear it daily, it may possibly be dead before you would put it on on alternate day. In terms of accuracy, I observed this watch for 24 hours and changed its position multiple times. After 24 hours of observation time, the watch gained only 2 seconds, which is incredible accuracy for its price and movement. There's a screwed on crown to offer 100 meters of water resistance and pulling the crown one step back will allow you to wind the movement. Pulling the crown one more step back will let you change and adjust the date. Pulling crown further to position 3 will hack the seconds hand and allow you to accurately set the time with synchronized seconds. Adjusted to 6.5 inches wrist, the watch despite being all steel weighs very light and on my scale came out only at 127 grams. For reference, Rolex OP36 size to same size wrist weighs at 120 grams. So this despite being 2mm larger watch and integrated bracelet design is only 7 grams heavier than OP36. Putting the watch in the dark, there is basically a lume that is hardly functional. This is not a watch you would wear to enjoy lume and accordingly the lume is rather very empty. I left the watch in the dark for another 10 minutes and during this time the lume in hands was close to non-existent. But again, lume isn't the strongest points here anyway. Under the macro, I have to say that the hour hand comes with incredible details. Aside from slight dust which you can't see from naked eye, there's basically no scratches on sight and also the edges of hands have absolutely no surface roughness, high spots or burrs. The minute hand does come with dust that could have been avoided and overall execution could have been improved. But again, you can't really see this from naked eye. The seconds hand comes with minor dust and overall the execution of joint here is fairly impressive for its price. The AVO markers are absolutely flawless with neither surface flaws or errors nor even dust on site. The quality of polish is also very good for its price. The dial comes with sunburst lines that are very clear and crisp and you don't even need a macro lens to see them. The way dial plays with the light is a result of these lines and overall the quality is very good. The paint for Tudor is also fine with some surface roughness which could have been bettered but for its price it's really not bad. The paint for date is just average with surface roughness on side. But the bigger problem here is that the date is not aligned or centered. See the space above the date and then below and you can see that the date is not aligned. This doesn't even require a macro lens to be seen and even from naked eye you can see that the date alignment is pretty poor. It is actually so obvious that I spotted it the moment I opened the box to see the watch first time. And you can also check any clips of this video again and you can see that the date was not properly aligned. When you are wearing a watch with integrated bracelet case, you know that it will wear like absolutely nothing else. My wrist size is 6.5 inches and wrist vertical span is 55 millimeter. 
the watch with 38 mm case and lug to lug of about 45 mm wears beautifully to the point that I personally think that 38 mm may likely be my pick of the range. Another very strong point with this watch is the case thickness and it comes with the thickness of only 10.42 mm and you can see that it even looks very thin on the wrist. The bracelet fit and finish is fine and aligned with its price if not better but the clasp is probably the weakest point of this watch. The flip lock simply sits on the links and not as such over the clasp itself. Rather it actually sits between the links which means that even your own wrist stretch can disengage the flip lock clasp and I do consider this as poorly engineered and executed. The whole system is actually so sloppy that you can disengage the clasp without ever having to open the flip lock at all. I analyzed it further to see the cause and what holds the clasp is simply a soft material and not as such a metal. I think it is Teflon from its color and softness and it simply isn't providing enough hold. For reference on Rolex Submariner this is stainless steel pin as opposed to soft metal here on Tudor Royal. Tudor Royal in all new integrated case and bracelet design is indeed a watch that offers the right amount of design characters and vibe where you get a modern watch but vintage vibe. The name from Tudor 1950s and design from Tudor 1960s and then a reshape from 2020 have resulted in a watch that's not only aesthetically pleasing but despite all that it has to offer it comes at a relatively smaller price tag. It isn't a perfect watch and we have a date in this example that's not centered and then the clasp system is simply poorly executed and then of course movement isn't in house but when you factor in the accuracy you really don't have much to complain. If you were thinking that with Royal Tudor might have just offered a watch with the best value for money you're on the money.